Okay, y'all, I'm back. I've uh, tested out cutting my meat with the um, meat slicer. So it's doing pretty good with that. As I said, once this um, meat sets up and starts to um, and just get real firm and that skin, that, that outer, that's a nice crust on there. This cooked a little bit drier than I wanted it, but nonetheless, it's good. I just sliced Tansy a plate off. She, she doesn't like any sauce on hers. So what I'm going to do is just start putting this sauce on here. And this will, this will uh, make it kind of soft on the outside. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to put, and what this, I'll tell y'all what, what's in my sauce here. Real simple. I always use Sweet Baby Ray's um, barbecue sauce as my base for barbecue sauce. And that's what I've done this time. I use Sweet Baby Ray's. And I mixed it with uh, vinegar, brown sugar, and just, you know, your regular uh, Tony Chockers, all of my regular seasoning, um, onion powder, garlic powder, and uh, some pepper. You can just mix all of that together. And then I put water in it because I want to thin that sauce down. I like that sauce to be a little thin. Um, for this purpose, I don't like the thick, thick barbecue sauce on here. So that's my brisket. Again, I cooked it a little bit longer than I sh really sh probably should have, but it's still fine. It's just cooked a little bit. Uh, and people who said some people like theirs, I've seen them cook it medium well. You know, and I should have, I, that I normally cook it medium well. But what I did, I was going by, in fact, I looked back and it was, you know, it was like cook it. Um, had a recipe to cook it, I think, 60 minutes per pound. That was a little bit too much, but I'm glad I did back the heat off because I only used 275 instead of 300 degree temperature to cook it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score the rest of this, and then I'm going to transfer it over to another pan, but I'm going to score it for the... And as we eat, I'll cut more of it off. I'm not going to cut it all up right now. I'm just going to cut so far and stop. And this is going to go a long way because I'm not cutting it really, really thin, y'all. I'm cutting it uh, kind of medium, you know, for brisket. A lot of people like this uh, real thin cut and make sandwiches out of it. I don't know how they're going to eat this, but this is going to be the meat for the day. I don't think I'm cooking another meat. Okay. Arms getting a little bit tired. I'm going to use my left hand. But basically, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to continue to cut along... Um, the top of here and if you know if we want more that'll be the guideline for cutting the slices up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on in another pan also got to get it off of here this pan takes up too much space okay and once I cover it and heat it up a little bit it'll soften and it'll be it's, it's wonderful like the intense ate her it's cold hard and everything she said she just does not like the uh, any sauce, and her friend was with her. She liked it both ways. Montagne was with her, so Montagne said she liked it either way. So hold on a minute, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to try to get this transfer done without the meat tearing up too, too much. I don't want it this way. Yeah, all that meat, that meat's cut off there. So what I'm going to do is just... The rest of this back part here will be easier to handle because it's still intact. But this is nice and tender. It's falling apart. It's so tender. So what I'm going to do with the rest of this, like I said, I'm just going to cut it to a point. And then I'm going to put it right on the back side of this pan. This up here in the front is already cut. But this here, 
See, I've got it scored like that, and they can just finish cutting it as they want to eat more. Okay? Okay? There we go, y'all. So that's it for the meat for right now. Of course, I had to drop that one and make a mess on the floor, so I'll, I'll have to mop before I intend it to. So anyway, we're going to get this other meat transferred over, put the rest of the sauce on it, and we're going to be done with this uh, brisket till we get ready to eat it. So hold on. And I'm going to uh, go over to the other side of the kitchen, and I'm working on some cabbage and macaroni and cheese and some cornbread, and that's it. Okay, and I've got some beans and uh, turkey tails already cooked in the uh, refrigerator, so hold on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with the cabbage. I'm going to put the real green parts in there first and let them cook for a few minutes, and then we'll come back and put the rest in. You know, the green parts take a little bit longer than the light green, the dark green parts. So you just put them in there. I got a little piece of bacon in there. Um, not bacon, but um, ham. I had some leftover ham meat, so I always keep that it's just a season. So we're going to turn the heat up high and get that going for about five or six minutes. And then I'm going to come back, like I said, and I'm going to put the, um, the light green part of the cabbage in there. And then they're going to cook. I've already seasoned my water. I've seasoned it with Tony Chalker, a teaspoon of brown sugar. Uh, a couple tablespoons of vinegar and I'm not putting any extra salt in there so we're just going to let it rip for about 10 minutes and cook those green parts and we'll come back and put the rest in go ahead and put that lid on there medium high heat is how you're going to cook that for about 5 minutes Okay, I think I got a look, just a few more dark green pieces here. Let me get all those dark greens in there because we want them nice and cooked and tender. Okay, so I'll put those few more in there. Oops. And we're on our way. Okay. Okay, I do believe we are ready to start adding our lighter greens, our light green greens. So what we're gonna do is just start putting them in there. Got them right here in my little colander. And I'm just gonna turn the heat all the way up on high so they'll be get started boiling. And as I put them in, I'm just gonna get so many in then I start stirring them to get all that good old juice on them. Cause you know, cabbage makes their own water. So you don't really have to put a lot of Water and just put enough in there to get them going, and then you uh, just stir it around, get them going in there, and they'll cook down. And we'll get all these in. I may have to add a little, 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 little bit more water. Gotta, yep. Chop those up. I cut those up. I didn't cut all the way through a couple of them, so have to break them up just like that. Cabbage is one of these real easy dishes to cook. So like, y'all see what I'm doing. All you guys do is get that uh, season water going. Get them in the pot. And just, this is just the way I do mine. Just stir them around. And let them, uh, a big chunk of ham skin. I want to get them my way, but I'm, gonna leave, I'm leaving it in there for the flavoring. Okay. That's about half in there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and cover them for a minute. And I'm gonna let that, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I think I'm just not, I'm gonna hold off on putting any more water. Cause when I cover it, that'll make more uh, water in there. So we're gonna let them just sit there and simmer for about two or three minutes and come back and add the rest of the cabbage. Medium high heat still. I do believe it's time to add another batch of cabbage. And on top of those, I'm going to slice my onion. Y'all know how to put that onion in there for flavor, for extra added flavor. So you just slice it in there however you want to slice it. Okay. And then you want to stir it and then start adding the rest of that cabbage in. See how we're going. Yeah. Water's getting really nice and low. So we're going to have to put a little bit more water. 
got another half a cup of water in there so they won't start to scorch. And I doubt they will, but we just need a little bit of water. I doubt very seriously. Not my pot. Okay, we're going to just go ahead and add our. About, let's see. Yeah, that's enough. About two thirds of a cup of water is what I just put in there for that amount. See how they've cooked down real good? I'm going to go ahead and just keep adding cabbage until I get the rest of these in there. So we need to get this show on grow, y'all. This thing don't want to come out of here. I got them packed in there, y'all. You know, last week I went to the store, and for whatever reason, they had cabbage was like 19 cent a pound. I thought that inspired me. I thought, ooh, cabbage, 19 cent a pound. So I bought this huge cabbage. That's why I got so much. I bought a huge cabbage. I didn't put that one all the way through either. Um, so anyway, I bought this big old cabbage. So here it is. The other thing is, yeah. It'll fit. It will fit, y'all. Gotta push it in there. Have faith. Hope y'all are doing something um, to sort of ease and relax your mind. You know, um, this crisis that we're going through now, y'all, we're just going to continue to pray our way through it. And we're going to just think good thoughts and think about, um, of course, we have to, you know, be vigilant and use wisdom and talk about and think about the things that we're going to do to, to uh, make it through this crisis, but at the same time, we also have to look to the future, you know? Have to look to the future. So here we go. We're going to put the rest of these onions up while that's cooking. Um, just going to let it cook. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the lid on right now so it'll steam it down. Uh, that's clean because we now get we get ready to start this mac and cheese. Okay. So what I was saying about uh, being vigilant in our endeavors to make these times uh, better for ourselves and for others. We don't want to get too overwhelmed. Uh, we still got to focus on the good things in life. The, the, the good things and the negative stuff both are going to come and certain things we just have no control over so we don't want to lose perspective we don't want to lose faith we don't want to lose focus we don't want to get too far off track uh somewhere in the word of god it says neither to the left nor to the right but keep it right in the middle of the road so that's what we're working on trying to do these days just keep it right in the middle of the road so that we can stay focused on the things of god and not get too overwhelmed with those things that we have no control over. With some things we just don't have any control over. And I think we are going to learn that in this situation, what we can control in it, though, is how we feel about it. And I think we need to feel positive about it. Uh, people are having, still struggling with being off and being home now. It's early in the game, but some people are still feeling that way. Like I say, uh, I completely respect and try to understand, you know, I might not always understand it, but I completely respect people who have struggles with, you know, just being in one spot. Um, one gentleman today, he did a real good thing. I thought it was really good. He started videoing he and his family at home having dinner. He just made it kind of comical, and uh, it was something good because um, I, I think I got in, not at the tail end, but I, I didn't quite catch what his profession was, but the way he was talking, he, he had some type of corporate job where he was into the office, and I think his wife was as well. And I believe he had four kids or five kids and a wife, and he was just not used to being home all day, every day with those kids and with that wife. So I say to you and encourage anybody who is struggling with that situation just to continue to pray and know that we're praying with and for you that you use this time and find something constructive to do uh, to better that. Because, you know, a lot of things are probably going to happen during this time that we had no clue about. So, you know, I just pray your strength in the Lord, like I said, to begin with, that you will be able to go through it and it won't create any real lasting 
uh, situation for you. So let's just continue to pray without ceasing and know that God is still in control no matter how bleak the situation may look right long and now. God is in control. Uh, he's got us. Uh, he knew this before the beginning of time. He knows our beginning and he knows our in between and he knows our end because he foreknew us as the word of God says. He called us by name to do what it is he put us here to do. And when that time is done, then it's done. So whatever the end might be in this situation, uh, I salute uh, some of the uh, leaders around the country that are doing, you know, and it's just like anything else. You can't do what you don't know. And for these leaders, they didn't know what to do until they start doing it because they didn't know. They, they had no idea, just like we don't. And I think uh, we just have to work on being a little bit patient because this toilet paper thing is uh, something else. Uh, one of the governors said, you know, he just did a list of things that are going to happen. And, and he made so much sense when he said, you know, we plan these things and we can only promise what we hope will happen along the way so that we don't get discouraged. So he said, and I got tickled, he said, toilet paper will be in the stores tomorrow. So for those of you who are still trying to find toilet paper, I was in search of toilet paper myself the other day, and God blessed me with some toilet paper. I was able to get me some toilet paper, y'all, and I shared it. I got one of those big packs from... Uh, Sam's Club, and I shared it, and so that's what we can do, we can just, you know, if we get a hold to one of those big packs and somebody else is looking for it, they can, you know, share it or loan them a pack until they get some, or whatever the case might be, there's no need to panic uh, about toilet paper, so now, you know, and it's amazing the things that can get to you in a crisis, so we understand now, we value having toilet paper, <laughs> But anywho, y'all, I got these cabbage going. I'm getting ready to set up over here to get some macaroni and cheese going, make a pan of cornbread, and I'm going to call it a day because it is that it's almost 2 o'clock. This meal will be ready to put on the table at 3. So hold on, hang on, and thank y'all for continuing though, to pray and, and to interact with me about uh, praying without seeking. We're still praying for, the, for our health care people. And for our service people at these fast food restaurants and all the other people around the country that are still performing jobs that is going to help us to keep going. Because there are certain positions in life that uh, we just cannot function without. It's, I mean, that's just a matter of the fact. And we thank God for those people who are able to still be in there performing those particular uh, services for us. So... I'm thankful to those people at the drive through And I think we need to be patient with them. I think we need to be courteous with them. I think we need to um, just let them know. You know, just, just tell them thank you. I've said thank you to a few people because I don't go to fast food, but I took the opportunity. I've been there twice so far. And, you know, give them a smile or a thumbs up or whatever to let them know that we appreciate what they're doing and, and not taking them for granted because... For those of us who like, uh, you know, different uh, companies, food and whatever, if they're open, be glad that those workers were the one that were chosen and that they're doing the job they were put there to do. Because as they're working, they got to have in their mind, what about my family? So we thank them and we our hats are off to them uh, for what they're doing. So let me get over here on the other side of the room, y'all, and I will be back. Okay, y'all, it's cabbage. And listen, uh, for people who cannot have any sodium, then, you know, you use the other seasoning to go in there to help it along the way. Uh, maybe some turkey bacon to go in there. It has a little bit of sodium in it. Um, get some new, you know, try the no salt in there. I do the brown, I always do the brown sugar and vinegar. That just enhances the flavor a little bit more. But that's the pot of cabbage, y'all. And... Put the lid on it and let it cook. And I cook my cabbage no more. No, I didn't mean to cover that completely. No more than about 20, maybe 30 minutes, depending on how many are in the pot. So, now let's switch over to the mac and cheese. 
I have got uh, a one pound bag of mac and cheese macaroni, elbow macaroni noodles in my pan. Um, I put, well this is, I put the equivalent of a stick of butter in here. This is uh, my Smart Start. It's what I use because I can, I can use Smart Start. And uh, for salt, I'm going to put about, start out with a, this is adobo seasoning. It has a real good flavor to it. Put a half teaspoon of adobo seasoning. And that's all the salt that I'm going to put in there because I'm going to be adding a couple other things that might have salt in it. So this adobo seasoning has, well, I don't like it. It's 250 milligrams of sodium for, let's see. So I use 500, so that, because it's a fourth of a teaspoon. So, you know, if you're counting sodium, you know what sodium you can have for the day. Uh, you know, I believe it's 1,500 is the magic number. And that's your overall, all you can have all day long, okay? So, 500 milligrams spread out over this pound of macaroni. It's not going to be that bad. And it's going to couple with the other things that you put in there. And, of course, I'm going to put... Uh, sodium 350 per half a, for fourth a cup. So 350, I'm gonna put about a half a cup of. Well, that wasn't really a half a cup. That's a, that must have, yeah, about a half a cup of this Alfredo. It makes it nice and rich and creamy. Okay, fourth a cup of that, and that is 350. Okay, then I'm going to. Put, I'm trying to cut back on the sodium. 90. This is wow. I'm loving this. I buy this little stuff right here. I don't know if it's real or fake, but it tastes good. Anyway, it's supposed to be Romano cheese topping. And this is like 90 for four for sodium. Uh, no fat, no one card. So we can go, we can just go crazy on this. So I'm gonna put a half a cup of that in there. Got half a cup of that. That's why we don't need. Uh, I'm sure it must have some kind of additives to give it that good flavor because it has a wonderful flavor to it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, and this is going to be baked at 375 for about 45 minutes. Okay. Whew, this smells real good, y'all. Okay. So now I'm going to go over here on the other side of the room. And I'm going to put uh, on my Ninja two cups of milk and four eggs. Just going to blend them up. Ooh. Okay. Got that nice and blended. You know what? Me and macaroni, every time I cook it, I, I poured in that one bag. It didn't seem like enough. So, of course, you know I poured more. So, that was too much almost. So that is two cups of milk and four eggs blended in my blender. Okay. And just give it a stir. Okay. Okay. That's almost ready. Put that back there. That's a good mixture there. Yeah. So what we're getting ready to do now is we're getting ready to get this in the pan. 375. I should have already had my oven heating up, but that's okay. I'm going to use one of my trusted uh, tin pans. This is going to be my mac and cheese pan. I'm going to move that those cabbage to the back, and we're going to use this burner here to do the mac and cheese. So what I'm going to do... That was my spring off my, I got on my Lakers jersey cooking in it today, y'all. I always put a little black pepper in my, uh, let's find my black pepper. I just always have put black pepper in my, uh, macaroni and cheese. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. Whatever it does, it does. I don't know. Black pepper sometimes. It just does what it does. I have no clue. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, I think that's done. I got these, I hate I got these other noodles all bothered, hot and bothered over here. So what I may do, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave them because I can use them later. I can make a, um, oh yeah, I'm going to put a little sour cream in there. If I got the sour cream that I need to use, this is about a good fourth of a cup. No, a good half, I'm sorry, a good half of a cup. I need to use that. Not serving any purpose sitting there. Okay. Okay. And the milk that I use, you can use whole milk, um, you know, whipping cream, whatever. I, I happen to use some whole milk and use that lactose free whole milk is what I put in there because we all have a problem with uh, the bubble gut thing with the with the uh, milk so we have to be real careful with the milk y'all okay now that i got all that going i am going to start pouring it into my pan here and then i'll add the, the cheese to it okay this is a this is four cups of cheese this is actually one pound of cheese I'm just going to pour some cheese. I'm going to pour about a cup of cheese in the, in the mix like this, like so. Okay, how's that? Okay. And we're going to go ahead and pour half the mixture into the pan like so. Spread that out. Mm -hmm. Pour that on top of there and just let it sort of lay on top like that. And it'll melt down through there. So this is like four cups of cheese in here. It should be a plenty. Okay. Okay. And I'll just pour the rest of that. And we got this baby ready to go into the oven, y'all. Okay. Just gonna spread it evenly, like so. I know I've made this many times on here, but this is for my babies who have not made macaroni and cheese before, and they want to know how to make it. So we're just going to put the rest of that cheese on top of there, just like that. Okay. We just sort of spread it out pretty good all over so we get some cheese on every part. And then we're going to put some of this uh, Romano cheese right on top of that. Remember, we had this here, cheese here, put some inside, and we're going to sprinkle, 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 sprinkle some more of that Romano cheese right on top of there. And we're going to lay a piece of foil on top of there so we keep that cheese nice and soft. We don't want it to get, our cheese can get hard and chewy. We don't want hard and chewy cheese. So we're just going to do sort of like this, okay? And we're going to reach right up here over top. And get some Italian bread crumbs, I believe. Yes, there they are. Just sprinkle some bread crumbs right on top of there. Okay. This is just to give it a little topping. That's all. That is all. That is all. That is all. More flavor. Topping. And we're going to top it off with some olive oil. Okay. I know the bread comes. This is just to give it a little extra added flavor, okay? This is a uh, pure olive oil, y'all. Mmm, yummy. Yummy. Okay, so we're done. Everything's ready to go into the oven. Okay. 
remember we talked about a long time ago turn those little ends up like that so if it bubbles up it won't bubble out to your stove so get ready to put this in 375 for about 45 minutes and we're going to have us a nice pan of mac and cheese in about 45 minutes so hold on i'll be right back okay y'all dinner is ready to serve the track flavor train has pulled in i know y'all can hear them so we get ready to sit back and relax and enjoy this dinner we got some pinto beans with turkey tails we got that luscious um brisket all nice and yummy with a little just a touch of barbecue sauce on it some good old creamy mac and cheese and on the back there some savory cabbage and buttery sweet cornbread so we get them ready to sit back relax and enjoy this meal thank y'all for tuning in thank y'all for continuing to pray and cease without praying and continue to pray for our health care workers and for our food service workers and our people out there who will continue to work to keep things going in this country so until i decide to cook again thank y'all for encouraging me praying with me standing in the gap uh, with me and praying for others so get in the kitchen and cook something good to eat and until i come back again uh keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down to the loo yeah tanya uh okay we got a couple special toodles here to the loo. <laughs> those are my folks y'all so to the loo y'all love y'all <laughs>